In this episode, Mike and I pick up where we left off, discussing his experience with the infinite banking concept and then becoming your own banker in general. Thank you for listening. This concept takes discipline. We don't have to use big, fancy illustrations, and we don't have to talk about $25,000 or $50,000 or $100,000 or $500,000 in premium. No. You know, consistently setting aside money, i.e. paying a premium. And I'll, and if I can circle back, sure. whenever you started, you were a one-child family or childless? We were childless. Okay. And, and I... You don't have to add answer, but did you even have death benefit when you began? So I had some through my company, which Perfect. I think everybody has, you know, or, or most people have most you know, people some have. sort of term something right. you know, it's, that, that covers you while you're employed, employed. right? And, and sometimes a, it's portable, and sometimes so it's it not. Was, it wasn't portable. Um, I had, and then I had a very small, like one of those. Um, a policy my grandma got when I was sure. when I was a, a baby. So it, it would have covered, I think it covers like two thousand dollars. So like it might cover partial funeral expenses. Wh- which right. was probably the cost of a funeral when your grandmother purchased yeah. that. So right? I mean so I mean from a life insurance policy perspective, all I really had really temporary. <laughs> was temporary. Right. And I mean, you know, that's one of those things that, you know, it yeah, it's great if I'm working for that company, but if I leave that company, yeah. you know, now the company- You get mad, get get fired, <laughs> yeah. retire. It yeah. goes away. And the closer you get to mortality, the likelihood of that being in force is nil. Yeah. So in, in here, so, you know, fast forward, well, let me say you probably, you know, uh, had a lot more life insurance than you cared to own originally, mm-hmm. right? Yeah. Although more is better than none or more is better than some. But now, you know, three children later, does that death benefit have a different... It, it, uh, has, it has a very different um, kind of connotation as far as... So number one, I know that if I was to pass, everything that we've got as far as from a debt perspective... Mm-hmm would be taken care of. Like, I don't have to worry about, you know, is she going to have a house? Is she going to have, is she going to be left with credit card debt? Is she going to be left with student loan debt? Is she going to be left with car debt? And, and I mean, we have debt. I mean, we're, we're paying down debt, but it's, you know, we're like, I think we're like every other American family. We've, you know, we've made some bad decisions. We've sure. done some different things and we have debt, but it's, but I'm not stressed about it because I know that, Number one, I we have a plan. We we talk about, you know, and I think that's one of the things when they talk about the stress around finances, is folks don't talk about it. They don't they don't make it a part of their regular oh conversation. Oh my gosh, preach! It is a very regular part of our conversation, not only yeah. with me, but it's also with her. It's with our children. Like, and one of my kind of dark secrets is I, co- I I coupon too. So like, I look at everything. And, but like with the couponing, like I teach my kids that if I can save $50 or $60 on a grocery bill or a, you know, a CVS bill or whatever bill, well, that's 50 or $60 that we can go buy Six Flex tickets. Yep. So there's, there's, a, there's an understanding of the value of, of the money and that kind of stuff. So I think when, you know, part of this forced me to also really look and really think about our, our, our finances and I don't I stress about it I, I still stress every month about you know paying the bills and all that kind of stuff but it, it's not like super huge stress yeah. it's you know it's just and I know the money's always there as long as you know as long as we're employed and we're bringing stuff in but I'm also not forcing everything to pay down the debt either I'm I'm strategically paying down the debt you know and we are rapidly moving down that path and it's all debt so it's not you know it's also like the you know yeah i have a 30-year mortgage well i'm not going to pay that mortgage in 30 years i'm going to pay that mortgage in you know five or six years versus you know 30 because i've got this strategic plan of we're eliminating all the other components and as i need if and, and that's one of the things nice about the program is if i say well let's just say i miraculously want to infuse something from either her policy or my policy or or something in there, well, you know, that, that accelerates the debt payoff as well. And then I can, you know, move that to the end of the yeah. of the term or or what have you. So it's 
it's powerful to have that. You know, and that's one of the things like we're starting to look, you know, now at, at well, about to have a 16 year old. Well, she's not gonna get a new car right off the bat, but at some point we are probably gonna need another vehicle that is probably for her mom. She probably won't, doesn't wanna drive that thing with three <laughs> seats, you know? <laughs> you know, her mom's probably, you know, her mom has a, has a classic car that she would like to restore or she may need to get a new, new car. Um, so, I mean, we're almost at that point where we could almost finance a whole new vehicle through, through our policies if we wanted to. And that's, once we get there, that'll be really, really powerful because then we would be more actively doing, you know, we would just set it up like a regular pull on an auto loan. Like, yep. you know, this is my payment. And then if I'm comfortable with, you know, whatever, and I'm going to pay that extra, you know, you talk about paying the 5%. Well, if you listen to Nelson, you don't steal the peas. You pay the That's extra. Right. Honest it's, banking. Yeah. You, you, you know, yeah, I can get the money at 5%, but I'm going to pay myself 10% because it's- Is that what you do, 10? Yeah, I do 10. That's what I do. It's like, you know, their money, quote unquote, that doesn't exist until you created it. You know, it's created based on your signature. Mm-hmm. Well, why would they loan money at 2.9? There, there's no risk in it to them whatsoever. It didn't exist. They're getting interest on thin air. Exactly. So, uh, my money's real. I had to exchange my God-given abilities and mm-hmm. talents and expertise, time away from my family and other things I love to do. Exactly. So the minimum value of my capital, our capital, our family capital is 10%. Yep. And we <clears throat> do that with, you know, we, we do also, you know, we practice the, the family banking concept and, and that as well. So like we, you know, we will make, uh, we started doing that you know, with not not so much with our life insurance stuff, but with our extra, you know, that we've we've had some few windfalls and that kind of stuff that, you know, like I have a small loan with my brother. I have a small loan with her, her mom and dad. I have a small, you know. The like, family banker. <laughs> <laughs> you know. Now, now, are they listening? Are you going to, we're going to talk about, how, I'm kidding. Uh, I don't I mean, I mean, it's, but it's one of those things. Like it's you, cool. It's benefit. I mean, cool. it's, it's mutually about, beneficial, yeah, right? You can start. You can start building stuff over time that, you know, again, for me, what a lot of it started with is going on that trip, having a mindset change, then start looking at like, and getting comfortable with how to, like a lot of people are not comfortable with wealth or money or, you know, and like starting to think about it. It's like, you know, and and it's, and it's kind of boring, you know, like people were like, what if you won the lottery tomorrow? I have a plan for if I win the lottery tomorrow. <laughs> so you must buy a lottery ticket. Yeah, so. <laughs> no, no, not very often. But you know, it's but it's one of those things. Like if you you understand how to make it grow and understand how to make it it last, and then you think about well, I'm not just thinking about my kids. I have three grandchildren also. We're that's probably the next set of policies that we're going to buy. Like how do we start getting into where they have stuff or, you know, and then like, how do we have it passed down yeah. generation over generation? You know, I mentioned it, you know, kind of one of the, the comments that, that, that my better half made today, you know, we were kind of looking at things just kind of, and she made the comment. She said, this is the first generation. She's the first generation to have where she's not going to be leaving debt behind. That's powerful. That is powerful. Yeah, very powerful. Every other generation has left debt behind. Yeah. You know, either funeral expenses or, you know, you know, things where they couldn't pass wealth down. Sure. You know, and, you know, she will be the first, and her policy is only a year old, and she's the first one that's going to have. That's awesome. Where do you put that on the life insurance illustration? Where do you put that in your financial, you know, path, it's, your, your program? You, you can't. Know? You can't. You can't. And, and then, you know, the idea that, that uh, I think the correct foundation, what a, in, in whatever that looks like for an individual or a family, um, you build the correct foundation, you know, you go through all the, the mental gymnastics that you have to go through, that we all have to go through, even to get to the point that you write a check at whatever comfort level. You know what I mean? When we all start out, it's, I'm, I was looking over my shoulder for the first three years easy probably four waiting for the hammer waiting for what was wrong that i couldn't see that is just going to pop up out of nowhere and crash the whole deal you know like what's wrong well after 
you know, a certain amount of time and you're practicing your comfort level, the nothing, the deeper you look, the better it, it yeah. looks. And it is, it's like, I quit looking for what's wrong well, you know, a long and, time ago. You know, and, and I, I don't go in and look all the time, but it's it's one of those things. It's kind of nice to go in and check you out, you know, kind of my, how things are, you know, going and that kind of stuff. But do you get pleasantly surprised? I do. I do. Yeah. And, um, you know, but it is one of those things like it took a while to kind of start figuring out like how how does this play and how do you you know, how do you leverage it? Um, and it, I mean, it, I, I did go through several, you know, like we looked at a lot of illustrations. I asked a lot of questions when we went through this initially. Uh, <laughs> We, you had the opportunity to hear Nelson twice. I right? had the opportunity to hear and Nelson twice. Doctor Cleveland, her Doctor Cleveland, um, and then Bob Murphy, Robert, Doctor Robert Murphy, mm-hmm. and uh, Carlos Laura. We held a, a uh, 2017, I think. Yeah, we had. They were they were here. They wrote a book that uh-huh. I also read. But I mean, and and really, to where I've gotten to where I'm really comfortable with it has been because I have done you know a lot of research and a lot of, but it's also like trying to start to figure out like. You, you kind of some people I think come into it where they have some ideas of how they're going to do it like one of the things I struggled with is I'm not a big business owner and you look right. at a lot of the use cases and stuff is like well you can do stuff for like your employees you can do stuff for your business partners you can do stuff. I'm not a big business owner I'm a you know I work all you know I have some small things that but I don't have a lot of insurable you know I, I can't go get a lot of insurable interest on right. folks because I don't right. you know I don't have that and that kind of thing so it's but it's also starting to think, well, okay, even with one policy, there's a lot of stuff I've been able to do with just <laughs> yeah. one policy. And and being able to get it to where, um, you know, and I, I, yeah, I probably made some decisions right off the bat where I probably shouldn't have done a loan here or didn't, you know, but it. But part of the education of that the we education. all have to pay for. <laughs> yeah. But it's also one of those things like at the end of the day, it's ultimately guaranteed. You know, um, I can, you can make some mistakes, you can recover from mistakes, it, but if you learn the discipline of how to use it and then like build a foundation from it, it's such a, such a powerful tool. You know, and you, you mentioned the word mistakes, cause I think I've made them all, I hope I have, but you know, I'm human, so I'm, you know, I haven't, but Nelson used to say he, uh, he had a policy on a business partner, right? And, uh, several, but you know, one of them graduated. And he's like, in came that death benefit. So, you know, all the premium he paid in, I mean, there were outstanding loans. The guy graduates, in comes that death benefit. And he used to say in his seminars, and, you know, that made up for an awful lot of mistakes. Mm -hmm. (laughs) It's like, um, you know, we were talking about it today. So, you know, I have a loan. At the end of the day, and then, so so we pulled up the, we pulled up the policy this morning. We're just kind of talking about it. Here's the loan amount. Here's the death benefit. Does it really matter that you're still going to get this pretty substantial, you know, death benefit if this little bit amount is taken away? Answer is no. It doesn't really matter because what's left is going to cover. Right. And then you hear, I'm glad you said that because uh, in the terminology you just used was taken away because a very common is like, well, the life insurance company keeps a cash value if you die, or you're borrowing your own money. You're paying interest to borrow your own money and those kinds of things, which, you know, on its face, if you don't know and and you only listen to the prevailing talking heads, you know, oh, yeah, yeah, it makes sense. No. So if you have an outstanding loan, it's you've enjoyed some kind of a purchase somewhere, some kind of a goods or services, right, mm-hmm. which is wealth. So you've enjoyed that, whatever it is, right? So it's not. Yeah. And then the on the loan, you can you cannot borrow more than the loan value. The exactly. loan value is always less than the surrender value. Yeah, we're talking about the cash value, right? Loan value, surrender value is all cash value. Well, and you know the. The web portal is very easy about that. It tells you. It <laughs> right? says you can only take, you can only borrow right. this much. I've never been able to go in there and say, I want, you know, you know. So it tells you, and it's, you know, and that's a nice part about it because sometimes I'm not, you know, I'd like to get more, but you know, sure. <laughs> it, it, that's no problem. Just put more in, right? Yeah, <laughs> you know, but it tells you. I mean, it, and it keeps you out of trouble, and and I know that's, but, but yeah, it's one of those things like. There, we have gotten value out of out of being able to take 
take the loans back and and do you yeah. know probably what you were going to do anyway most of the time you're going to wind up yeah, yeah generally it's well spend a spend a couple of minutes on uh, on your thought process how your thought process from early on being exposed you know and most most of the listeners today will not have and haven't had the opportunity didn't have the opportunity to, of course they won't have to uh, listen to Nelson Nash unless it's recorded you know that recording's available mm-hmm. six and a half hours at the Nelson Nash Institute or I think at the the notes here mm-hmm. you can buy that presentation but you're not going to hear him live in this lifetime you did mm-hmm. have the opportunity at least twice twice mm-hmm. um so, but, you know, share with us your, your, the expansion of your thinking, your thought process, and how that's kind of changed or developed, or, um, and I don't want to put you on the spot. Yeah, yeah, it, I, I think, I think my thought process, so there, there are certain things, especially that Nelson talked about, that, number one, he's, he's extremely personable, and the way that he, um, the way that he talks and the way that he makes himself, it, it feels like he's available in, in his presentation. So it was a very, you know, very informal conversation, very, you know, and, and a very honest conversation. And the, the way, and there was a lot of things that he spoke to that really resonated um, that, you know, we probably know, but, you know, it's, you, you have to, th- you know, sometimes you don't think about it, right? Like, for example, you know, the, I, we, we mentioned the, the don't steal a piece and the analogy of the grocery store. And like you start to think about that, but, but a lot of people have that mentality that, well, if I own the store and I've paid for that inventory, well, I should just be able to take that inventory and go use it for my own personal use. Yeah. And, and yeah, for a little while, you can probably get away with that. But at some point, you're going to get to a, to a point that... You're going to start hurting yourself. You're going to start hurting the business, and it's it's not going to. So, like to have the idea that yes, you've paid for that inventory, but you really need to replenish. You know, pay what your customers are paying, or pay. You know that be, or be more honest, or, right. or more. Be honest with it. Mm-hmm. Um, is very important, and then you know so that those things really resonated with me. You know, I do have. You know, one of the other things that really resonated with me was the, uh, you know, he, he uses his forestry background um, a lot in his presentation. And I have an agric- I have a degree in agriculture, so a lot of the things that he talked about from a forestry perspective and, and like understanding long-term, you know, growth and long-term, um, you know, passing it on to different generations and things of that nature really, really resonated with me. Mm-hmm. Even at the time when I was hearing some of these concepts, we didn't have right. kids, but I had grandchildren because she came to the, we, we got together and she had a previous family. So we had grandchildren. So like I was thinking about, well, how do I leave stuff for them also kind of, although that wasn't one of the primary drivers of, you know, doing this. So, you know, listening to him, a lot of you know a lot of his concepts resonated um you know i really love i when i think back now about you know he talks about um uh, you know kind of the hidden opportunities or the opportunities that show up mm-hmm. when when you have access to, to things um I, I think he mentions in in one of his talks he talks about one of his friends came to him with a with a land deal I think it was of you know he could buy so many acres for you know, like twenty thousand dollars or something and he ran down to the to the, to the the insurance office and state got State Farm. The State Farm. I didn't know at the time because I did this after yeah. uh, listening to Nelson. I didn't know he could go down and get a check from his State Farm it, office, the local guy, right? But you start to think about that. It's like, <laughs> you know, and I kind of put it in akin to like some of the things that I've been able to just, you know, I don't go down to the office to get it. I go on the internet and get the, sure. you know, the check and it shows up, you know, like within, you know, a week or so. But it's it's that kind of same thing like having those capability and he talks about that in his in his presentation um i think the other thing you know for me from a mindset perspective is is really getting comfortable with with understanding more about money and more about wealth and like how to you know 
it shouldn't be a scary conversation. It shouldn't be a, it, it should be something that we're, we're expressing and that we're talking about or that we're growing, you know, all the time. It's like with any other part of, of, of my personal growth is like, this is a function of that and being able to, to have a good understanding. So then you don't make as many, you know, bad mistakes or, or, or gee whiz, you know, I really shouldn't have done that kind of moves. Right. So, and I mean, we all had them, I've had them. Um, but my growth has really been like, I started listening to this, sat through those conversations with Nelson, listened to, you know, some of the examples that, you know, here's this guy that has this great concept. He, and he talks about the mistakes he's made and how he got out of them. And like he made, you know, he talks about like he was way, way in debt at one point, you know, had, you know, way over leveraged, way over, you know, extended and how this, you know, gets you out of there. And I think that's one of the best ways is to see somebody who is now a, you know, an expert or, you know, really kind of the, you know, the godfather of all this stuff saying, Hey, I was in that same spot. And, you know, I, I had the belief in the, and the, you know, I utilize this process that grows over time has, you know, definite, um, you know, value and, and can, you know, can get you to a place that you, you know, that's hard to get there in other ways. You know, you, you can't just put money in a savings account and hope you're going to eventually at one point, you know, save your way out of all this stuff. You need to have some of these more powerful tools to get you there too. So. Yep. <clears throat> I, I agree with that completely. Um, and I, I gotta say, you know, when you, you, your first policy was on you, mm-hmm. then I think you went to your eldest mm-hmm. and you came back to your better half mm-hmm. and then, and now the kids. To the new, yeah. So you've laid the correct foundation, and I think you've expanded correctly. My opinion, um, especially if we don't have you know in other insurable interests, business partners, parents, or whatever, and those are all very limited. You know, there's the insurability is very defined in the life insurance and, world, and it's but it's it's also allowed us to have some other conversations. So you know, like I'll, I'll use my parents for example. So. We've talked about, you know, I one of the things I did want to talk to them about was like maybe taking a policy out on them. Well, they're not really that they haven't been really that interested in it because they have their own stuff going on. They have sure. their own things, you know. But one of the things they never explored until I brought it up was taking a policy a policy loan on something that they already had. They didn't even know that they had the benefit uh-huh. in some of the things that they had paid for in order to do that. So it has also expanded some of their thinking as far as like as i've gone through this journey yeah. like having the conversations about and i'm you know and i kind i have a really pretty good handle on you know what they've got going on and that kind of thing i mean not that i i would love to expand it and do more you know sure. i think everybody wants to to do more if you can but but they never even thought about doing a, a policy loan well they took out their first policy loan on one of their policies that they had. It's not built the exact same way as, sure. as, as mine, but you know, they were able to buy an RV with it, you know, really, <laughs> that's awesome. You know, and being able to then, uh, well, you know, it, they're retired. They, you know, they're on a limited, you know, but then they could go take this policy loan. Now they're paying it back in there. I love that. You know, and it's just, it's those concepts that I, I don't think people would even think about yeah. until you start looking at, some of these concepts and looking at some of these things and you know not every policy is built in a way that you can do that but they had one that they were able to take you know and buy a buy an rv that they can you know the majority of nelson's policies were just typically structured traditionally structured life insurance you Mm -hmm. know they didn't have the the ability to wade a premium to the pua Mm -hmm. um and I, I think I've talked about that many times. His first policy was when he was 13 years old. His daddy bought it on him when he turned 14. He said, here, boy, this is yours. You pay for it. Yep. Then he bought his second and third policy and fourth policy. And once he married Mary at 21, I believe, and she was 20, 19 or so. They bought another one at 22. I'm just saying that uh, those were typically structured life insurance policies, you know, and probably much like your parents. That's what they had. So... This idea and the ability to weigh the premium to the PUA is not that old, really, yeah. when you look at life insurance. And then, um, and then you know, to continue on that, though, I think structure is important. You can mm-hmm. put too much premium to the PUA too early, um, which is detrimental over the long term, you know, eight, 
year 15 20 year mark eight, eight years and beyond is detrimental to the policy so there's a line there <clears throat> the correct structure for an individual should happen with an educated consumer mm -hmm. and an educated financial professional in my opinion and they should all never look alike we kind of briefly talked about your mm -hmm. children they can a child's policy cannot look like an adult's and policy it, and right? they don't and right and they they have different we and we look at them at a different way so sure. like i'm looking at them at more of a long-term kind of thing that you know there's going to be some stuff there for them yep. it's never going to be and i always tell our kids you're they're we're never going to leave you to where you're independently wealthy that you're never going to have to work and never have to you know whatever you're you're always Did they look at you and say well why not <laughs> <laughs> we're never going to get there but it it's it's all but it's also one of those things like i want them to be able to have some things that that i didn't have yeah. or or that you know or that their mom didn't have and being able to um to teach them how to protect that and how to use that so then you know maybe not their gen they're not their generation but maybe the next one or the one after that might be at a point but i i also don't want our family to ever get to a point where we don't understand the value of work or don't understand the, no question you yeah. know of, of being able to earn it yourself but there is a lot to be said about do you have to work for the man or can you work for yourself or can you work, you know, and, and having that entrepreneurial. Let me tell you what, it, to me, I mean, I look around and I think that we live in the greatest country mm -hmm. uh, ever put together by man, right? As flawed as it is and as anti-state as I am, I'm not, I mean, I love our country. I'm very nationalistic, right? Yep. Um, but we... I look around and, and as a people, not only our country, even around the world, we have forgot how to be free. We have forgot, we've forgotten if we've ever known how to be free. Yep. And it's like this con constructed and controlled narrative of dependency. It's like, you know, uh, you know, this is uh, May, right, in 2021. So this will probably be out in June, I think we said mm -hmm. earlier with Andrew. Uh, here's my point. That you go to restaurants today and, you, and they're understaffed. Everywhere you go today is understaffed. Why? I don't know. We all hear the narrative, well, unemployment is, you know, way too high. And then all the all the governmental programs that they're coming out with, where somebody can stay at home and make, you know, the equivalent of $15 an hour, plus get two years of free health care. What's the incentive, yes. right? Well, if you don't understand what the incentive of applied knowledge and work and effort and the reward that brings, well, that may be appealing. Let me stay at home and I can earn 15 or 20, $25,000 a year. Well, that, well, you will never experience the rewards of being productive and, and participating in capitalism. And how can you? The future is unknown until you do it and experience it. So I'm, I'm just saying that we have forgotten how to be free. Mm -hmm. And we have, um, we don't, if we forget how to be free, then how can we, uh, you know, perceive or uh, project the possibility or the results of being free and applied is very difficult is what I'm saying um, where if we go through this hardship whatever it is we all have hardships you know in learning and education or application of a trade or whatever it may be but why do you go through all that why do you go without why do you you know endure these hard times it's because of what we become it's, it's, right? it's because of what we become going through that journey mm -hmm. and the freedom and all of the fruits of freedom exactly um, and i and i think the infinite banking concept is is actually um and literally austrian economics at the UND mm -hmm. level right i don't have to be dependent upon a market any market which i cannot control whether it's a real estate market interest rate market bitcoin and digital it, it's you know and it's one of those things like again it's a it's a foundational component. I still have all the other stuff. I still have, you know, I still have the 401k. I still have, you know, the Roth account. I have, I still invest in the stock market. I still invest in the real estate, you know, but those aren't my foundations. Mm -hmm. My foundations are, the, is, is one of the, is this concept and being yeah. able to leverage this. And I think that's one of those things like, you know, I have friends that are really worried about different things because they aren't set up the same way. They have an opportunity. They do. They do. But, you know, 
I didn't stress about who's sitting in the Oval Office right now. I'm not, you know, and I, I read, you know, I didn't even watch the State of the Union the other night. I read the, you know, the next day I read some of the points that were made of it. Yeah. There's some stuff in there that, okay, I don't know if I fully agree with, but, you know, it's, yeah, it's one of those. But many conversations, that, this is my perspective, yeah. and I don't, you know, without being political, it's like, Generally, I don't care right, left, red, blue, whatever. I don't. I don't believe in the division, the the narrative, and the focus of division that um, dividing us at, at every level, whether it's color, or, uh, race, or income, or mm-hmm. whatever it is. I mean, I don't. I love heritage, and I love individual, and I love diversity, and I think that we all should embrace who we are and who you know. Um, Overall, and I'm a I'm a anti-state kind of guy. Mm-hmm. I'm a complete anarcho-capitalist. I believe in zero government, and you you can have your own opinions and share them if you like. And you know, and I respect your opinion, mm-hmm. right? Um, until that happens, you know, uh, which I don't really think that that'll happen in this lifetime. But that's my perspective: zero state, zero government. Um, in my experience over the last 50 plus 55 plus years has been that we are either enjoying galloping socialism depending on you know who what puppets are in the government or we're experiencing creeping socialism but either way we're moving towards socialism that's my perspective yeah and i try to avoid the noise i try to avoid the news and that's, I mean, if, you know, that's one of the things we try to... I should probably quit talking politics. Yeah, we, try to, we try to avoid <laughs> as much as we can. But, I mean, if you think about it, though, if you have a good understanding of what you have and you protect what you have, you don't have to worry about exactly. what's going on. And there is a lot to be said in that. So, like, when I have the conversations with my teenager about, you know, she's starting to think about looking for a job or thinking about looking for whatever... Well, I pull off, so I, I reach over and I grab some of the books that I have on entrepreneurship. I mean, I've spent a lot of time in the corporate America world. And I mean, I know about starting out at 16 and working the fast food job all the way up and, you know, having a very, you know, pretty successful career and, and moving up the career ladder and the stress that goes along with it and, you know, changing jobs and all that. I've been there, done that. I've, I mean, I can write a book on that. And I... And I, I still believe, you know, corporate America, you can grow and you can, there's a lot of stuff to be said about it. There's also something to be said, and it's a mindset shift for her when we start talking about, well, yeah, you could go get a job at McDonald's or Brahms or, you know, Dairy Queen or whatever, right? Or you can get a job at the grocery store or, or whatever, and we will support you in that. But hey, also think about, well, you like to dog groom. You like to... You know, you've sat here and you listened to, uh, you know, me do, talk about real estate. You've listened to me talk about, you know, like doing, you know, like notary stuff or doing this stuff mm-hmm. or doing that stuff. There's a lot of opportunities that you could work for yourself and make as much. So we have these conversations about, yeah, you can go make twelve, fifteen dollars an hour. But then, you know, if you did this or that, you might be able to make like fifty dollars an hour. And what is the greatest value of your time and what forces you to to be able to you know, put yourself out there. Do you go down an entrepreneurial path and have, you know, this could be a thing that helps you on that path or, you know, being able to, and I think it opens up her eyes to be able to see yeah. other ways to do different stuff, yeah, yeah. you know, and, it, and if we didn't do this five years ago or six years ago, or, you know, sat through those kind of things. We wouldn't be having those conversations. I would be still, you know, slave to the grind, not even thinking about, you know, what, what is the next step? Yeah. look like for us you know yeah I think you know in my experience I mean our daughter's 13 you know we've had lots of opportunities to talk about money economics and you know and at 13 I mean you know how exciting can you get unless you see your name on there or the account and there's numbers there it's a little bit more exciting but not really but yeah. um, you know I don't I don't think that uh uh, you know, yes, we we're going to get some things by osmosis, but this is absolutely an opportunity to lead the way, be the example mm-hmm. um, for your family, for your friends, 
Um, and some will get it, some won't. You know, every family is different, but we all have, you know, the brother-in-law that knows everything or mm-hmm. the one child that's paying attention to every word that comes out of your mouth and the other one that's yawning, you know. But, uh, and, and I'm, I know there's no disparagement there. I'm just saying that every family is relatively the same or similar, but we're all different. But you've got to be the example. You have to lead the way. You know, we don't just wake up and spontaneously, you know, uh, do everything correctly, Mm -hmm. right? So I think it's a great opportunity Mm -hmm. when it comes to economics and money. I think, you know, and it it starts with, you know, and that's one of the concepts is it starts with your own house. It starts with your own, you know, your own economics. It's your own stuff. I mean, it's being your own banker, right? And I mean, it's, and we have... We, we don't do it as consistently as I would like because, I mean, we do have the young kids and that kind of stuff. Sure. But, I mean, we have the family meeting. We talk about, you know, different things. We talk about decisions that, that we make as a family. Yep. Now, a lot of times the kids are really on board because it's normally decisions about are we going to buy the Six Flags tickets or are we going to buy the zoo passes or yep. are we going to, you know, do we want to go on this family vacation? But we also talk about, you know, the meal planning. I mean, it's all, it's just, it, it, this all becomes part of an, a general conversation that we have as a family, which not only ties us to the concepts, but ties us as a family to yep. the overall relationship yep. and, you know, how we're going to go. And we're very, very busy. Got lots of irons in the fire and lots of stuff. But those conversations are really, you know, really important. They're grounding. Almost. They're grounding. Very grounding. Yeah. You know, I, I have a friend that uh, I heard this many years ago, several years ago, and, and uh, he was new Nelson, a friend of Nelson, and he's Greek and uh Matthew Nelkus, and he, uh, I think that's where I heard it from, I'm pretty sure, that uh, economics, the etymology of the word is, um, I forget it, the terminology in Greek, but it, the etymology of the word is order in the home, economics. You know, I don't remember the Greek mm-hmm. translation of that, but that's very interesting. And, you know, you... I love, uh, like, we have starter kids that have Nelson's book, the Banking with Life DVD, and just some mm-hmm. other things in there. And one of the other things is a chapter out of Mises' uh, uh, Magnus Opus, you know, the uh, human action. And it's one chapter out of the book, right? Because most people won't really read that big mm-hmm. Magnus thing. <laughs> but they'll read this little thing, and it's a uh, place of economics, in learning and it's like you cannot separate economics from any aspect of your life whether we talk about it or not and as you mentioned a couple of times you know we go back when i was growing up you didn't talk about sex and you didn't talk about politics right today it's you don't talk about money right so and there's certain aspects of my, you know like i still i was brought up where we don't talk about salary so like we don't talk about you know what we what we make or whatever right but, you know and, but that's changing also in the workplace but you know but having a good understanding of what you what kind of that the, the overall dynamic i think is very is very important and that's what we talk about yep, is i like, agree is is you know and, and for the kids to have a concept of you know, especially with my with my kindergartner, his teacher gives him a job, and like we have these conversations because he's gotten fired from his jobs at, at school. I like him. <laughs> <laughs> he must be an independent thinker. <laughs> so, you know, he's he's a rambunctious little little man, and uh, so he's. We, but we've had to have conversations about, you know, why getting fired from your job is is an important, you know, and then like what does that mean, like if because that, that starts to build a, a greater sense of, well, yeah, it's just his little kindergarten job right now. But, right. but you know, the jobs lead to, and the hard work leads to, you know, the home and the things that yeah. we have and, and, and the, the, the stuff that we enjoy, you know. And, and we, t- we try to tie those concepts with him um, because we are trying to bring him up as a, as a strong man and a, sure. and a good man, you know, and trying to instill our, and, and it's, it's hard for, especially the little kids to really understand these values of some of this stuff. And we, we try at every point to try to, try to bring some of that stuff in. So like we've. A couple of more years, he's like going to say, dad, does everything have to be a learning lesson? <laughs> it's, but I mean, we've, you know, we've experienced, like we've, we've introduced them to 
not I don't want to plug them, but like the Tuttle Twin stuff, like in reading oh, yeah. those books and like some of the concepts from from there, like there there are some things that we've we've had them listen to those audio books. We've we've tried to read those stories to them and that kind of thing. So it it start it, it may not fully sink in right now, but we yeah. that is things that we are introducing into the house. And I mean, you mentioned reading that big thick book. Well, some of those little books are that thick in there. The Tuttle Twin series about Connor Boyack. Um, yeah. And they're they're releasing them continually. They, we have all of I think we have all of them, and he's also doing a, a cartoon series right now. Yes, um, which which I you know I did put a little support into that because I I believe in in what he's doing from a book perspective. Good, and maybe he'll listen to this episode, and our <laughs> listeners support you, Connor. So I mean, I'm just saying, yeah. Um, no, it's but, all good. Nothing but love. I support them. But, you know, like they have a book on the law, you know, which, I mean, the law is a pretty thick. Frederick Bastiat, 1850 yeah, France. You know, pretty pretty thick book, you know, but you condense it down to that child's version. You understand what's going on there. It's all about the concepts. Yeah. They did I Pencil, which did Leonard I Pencil. E. Reed, Nelson's um, mentor, originally wrote that. They've essay. done, um, they did one on, uh, the one I really liked, which was really came out kind of at the, it, it, it was about dystopian futures and, um, oh, yeah. and it, it um, that came out right before all the COVID stuff hit. Mm-hmm. So like having, you know, being a, we were actually listening to that one right before all this stuff happened. And, you know, you start to think about like, where could things go, mm-hmm. you know, um, so that one was an interesting one, but they, he's had several different ones, but it's interesting to, you, you know, when it starts to sink in, when like when we came home last night, um, he was, my, my, my son was starting to talk about, well, how much lemon or how many lemons would it take and how much lemonade would he have to sell in order to finance a trip to Disneyland? Ooh. Yeah. Do you know how he, much? He, I don't know, but he should probably hire his teacher. <laughs> You know, better work to stand. <laughs> um, so you know, so it's it's like, and I I kind of celebrate those kind of things You're when talking they, about franchise here, man. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I kind of really you could have start thinking. I love that. You know, I love that. And of course, the answer is it's a lot of lemons and a lot of lemonade too. Right. You know, but he was starting to try to put together like, how do you put together a lemonade? Like he was talking about like getting wood to build a lemonade stand and yeah. like, you know. Man, to so be a wood broker and, and yeah. you know teach people how to do their own lemonade stands and sell them the lemons and sell them the material and exactly. charge them for the rights. You but <laughs> for you know for a six year old to come up with that, that's try, awesome. Try to put together like yeah. what what a Disneyland trip would be off of a lemonade. I'm like, I support that entrepreneurial spirit right there. That's it's right. good stuff. Then finance the lemonade stands that you sell, right? Mm-hmm. No, that's awesome. That's very powerful you know it is it is it's a little lessons over and over it's extremely powerful and and it's it's so cool to be able to take this stuff and you know and for me it it came from you know a mindset a mindset change walking through europe through europe all right was there anything looking back that you would do different on your your experience of becoming your own banker god i wish i'd known about it earlier um if if that was you know I think it's I, I wish I'd done it earlier. Um, but you couldn't do that different because you weren't yeah, exposed to it. Couldn't so. do, couldn't do that you know um, you know as far as doing it different I I think excuse me I probably would have um, now that we have all of the policies going I kind of wish we probably had the second policy maybe a little bit earlier and maybe not have done the child policy before I did um, Jenny's policy, but, you know, in general, it's been a, I, I think it's been a very, but even if we had done that even earlier, I don't know if I would have known how to really use it other than just putting, you know, writing the check and, yeah. you know, and that kind of stuff. I don't, I think it, it took a while and it took some experimentation and it took some really, you know, cause you know, some of it is is that FOMO or that you know shiny squirrel syndrome because like I'll look at something and I'll be like, ooh, that looks really cool, and I'll put some energy towards it, and then something else will come out and that kind of stuff. So, it, for me, part of it is also the discipline of I've got a you know discipline and consistency, yep. you know, and and then being able to you know know. So I mean, there's there's been points where I you know it's like put some energy here or not, but now I know that now. If 
five years down, you know, five, six years that, that I've been doing this, I now know how to use it. I know how to leverage it. And it, it, that all came from experience. So I don't know if I would really change very much other than I really wish I'd been able to learn it earlier. Right. I think what I was hearing was focus and concentration. Yeah, maybe really, it is. It is. <clears throat> it is okay to pay a premium. You know, I don't have to know what the future is unknown. I don't have to know what I'm going to do. I know what I think I want to do. I know what I'd like to do. I know what I'd like to expose my children to. I know I have an idea of the experiences I would like to enjoy with my family, but I don't know what the future is. So. Um, yeah. I, but I do know it's going to cost money. Yeah. So it's okay well, to pile up a bunch of money without having an end. A, a plan. Yeah. And, and I mean, it's, you know, like for us, our plans drastically changed. I mean, when I got into this, no kids. It was just right. we were thinking about. <laughs> I mean, we were, we were trying to plan, like, how do we do a, you know, a, a travel, you know, how do we go travel the world for the rest of our lives kind right. of thing? I mean, that was our... You know, we we came back and just were like, how do we get from having to work for corporate America and 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 having to, you know, can we get to a point where we could work for ourselves or do something else? Because we have other interests. I mean, we both like our jobs, but you know, our plans drastically changed. I mean, travel we, the world with children. We and we're starting to do that. I yeah, mean, it's uh, and it's a very different experience when you travel with you yeah know, with children. I know that those are the greatest thing that in my life, one of the greatest things was watching my children's like horizon expand, their perception expand. Mm-hmm. You know, growing up in America. I mean, I'm I'm a I'm from Johnson County, Texas, right? If you'd have told me that I'd have ever been able to take my family on one or more than one European vacation, I just wouldn't have believed you. I couldn't wrap my yeah. mind around it, right? But watching my children's expand their mind, their thinking expand was just priceless. You know, when you're walking by nine hundred, you're walking on 1,100, 1,500 year old streets and buildings and, you know, and here America has been in existence a couple hundred years, you know, and it's like very... Very rewarding and very satisfying. And just to see how different areas live. So, you know, the <laughs> right. first, you know, the first vacation we took our 15 year old on, we went to Belize. Mm-hmm. So, going to Latin America and and seeing that country and seeing poverty. Oh my gosh! Drive it, around Belize and watch the it, dirt floors and how they it, have, catch water and it, it which is I'm such, just saying it's, it's a, like we're it's, privileged. It's very different. Very. And, and I I love Belize. I love Me the too. country. I love being there. Um, the old British Honduras. Yeah, and it it was, but it's a totally different lifestyle, and and that was one of those things like you see the smiles versus that you don't see here, and it's a, it's totally different, and you you really think about like the the culture, and you think about the life that they live and and what they value versus you know our first world problems that we yeah. have that I can't get on the internet and oh my gosh you know um, kind of preach things. man my <laughs> iPhone was battery was dead yesterday and I'm like after you get over the angst then it's all of a sudden really enjoyable yeah. and then <laughs> you know and then um, the you know we, we were planning to take all of all of the family on a on a vacation last year but then of course all this stuff hit right so we actually went over spring break this year we went to Puerto Rico mm. and we were able to take all of the kids to, to Puerto Rico and to see how it's different there and that kind of stuff and and it was and you talk about the expansion of their of their minds and the expansion yeah. of the and being exposed to stuff so like my son he's lo, he in his school they're doing he's in a dual language program so he's learning English and Spanish but to be in an area where he kind of got a little bit of an immersion yeah. into into Spanish and was able to actually talk with like the waiters and waitresses and you know that kind of stuff in in Spanish although he doesn't have a big vocabulary but he was able to you know at least say hello and goodbye and and then to have his little sister kind of mimic the same thing but mm-hmm. and they loved it i mean the things that they still talk about we it's been over a month yep. since we went on that trip they still talk about oh man years later we still yeah. we and it's we know, talk about it as a family those yeah. experiences oh my god it's we still talk it's, about them. it's amazing yeah. and and travel allows you to do that and you know it's one of those things like you talk about freedom you talk about being able to do stuff it's it's those kind of things that you know i didn't travel to europe until that trip that we took and it was 
it was such a mind altering right. trip and experience. I mean, I have traveled all over the United States. Been, you know, I had been to Mexico, I'd been to Canada, I'd, you know, but to have something that was actually such a different cultural experience. Because I mean, even if you travel the United States, it's a lot of the same and a lot of the same things. You don't really get to see it, but when you step into another well, country, you're going from four or five different countries and different languages. And, yeah, yeah, I mean, it was it was amazing, and to, to just to learn. And yeah, I mean, total socialist over there as far as like the medicine and all that kind of stuff. And, and I don't want to get there here, but just the different mindset of, you know, uh, I, I loved it in Spain. We were, you know, one of the things they tell you is um, don't expect to go get dinner at six o'clock in the evening in Spain. Restaurants are closed because everybody's, you know, off work or they don't open up the restaurants until seven or eight or nine o'clock at night, you know. Because the things are just closed. I mean, from like three, to, you know, like from two to, to five or two to six, yeah. things are just shut down. I mean, it's just, you know. <laughs> you know, Jen and I still talk about this one time we were in Vienna with Nelson and Mary and walking up and down the streets and and, uh, and all the, I'd never had Venus schnitzel, you know, until I've been there. I love it. You know, it's like. Uh, chicken fried steak with a different gravy. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> but we were walking down, uh, <clears throat> you know, the uh, uh, plaza, and uh, we found a little uh, pizzeria, right? Yeah. And so, and, and that's what they wanted. So we went in there and sat down. We sat there for an hour and a half, enjoyed it. We were like very, there were very few people in there. Mm -hmm. And, and uh, after an hour and a half, right? And we're typical Americans. I mean, we're like hitting the ground running on a vacation, seeing mm -hmm. everything, don't want to miss anything. Um, but after sitting there for an hour and a half and eating and, and enjoying all that and we're leaving and it was almost an insult to the proprietors because we didn't stay, you know, for two or three hours. Yeah, they expect you to dine. Yes. They, I mean, and it's, you know, and that was one of the things we, we actually took a tour in Rome and one of the tour guides, he mentioned, he said, you know, a lot of people think so a lot of Americans, when they come to Europe, they think that the waiters are rude because the waiters aren't like, if you think about here in the States, they're looking to turn that table every 45 minutes. Oh yeah. So they're, it's, yeah. you know, so they're checking your glass. They're making sure you have yeah. everything. They're moving the food. They're and everything, but like get out. It's, yeah, like, yeah. it's like every, they're looking to turn that table yeah. on a rapid fashion in Europe. The culture is that they expect you to be there two, three four hours to dine and to converse. And yeah. so the waiters, they come, they, they pretty much just every once in a while, they will check on you, but it is like, there's going to be a good 15, 30 minutes in between some of that. So if you, so from our, it's our culture thinking, well, that's rude. They should be over here, you know, on yeah. top of us left and right. That's not what they're there for. You know, they, time, know they know it's a three hours right. experience. I was in France one time with a friend that he, he's a historian and he put together a trip, a yeah. Normandy trip, right? And a bunch of men and one girl, it was supposed to be an all men's trip, but she finagled her way in. Lovely, his daughter-in-law. Anyway, uh, we're in Bayou, France, mm -hmm. right? Normandy region, uh, Calvados region of Normandy. Anyway, we're you know, best food ever, we're eating, and, and there's like about nine of us, or seven or eight of us, there's a lot of us, and uh, and we're all ordering different things, you know, and there's uh, the wine and all of that stuff, and it was going so long, you know, we're, we're like hitting the ground, you know, with these private tours all over Normandy, mm -hmm. I mean, before daylight, and then going all day, and so this is a late evening mm -hmm. meal, um, and I didn't, this is, I didn't know, I didn't know any of this, right? This is when I learned that um, the servers would only come around when everybody was finished with the course, uh -huh. you know, so there'd be four or five courses, whatever they were. Um, but, you know, the one guy over here that's the slowest eater in the whole world, you know, taking 45 minutes or an hour or whatever to finish his plate, everybody else is finished for 20 minutes and nobody's coming around. The servers aren't coming around because he wasn't finished. And as soon as he was finished, then it was the next yep. course. I mean, completely different. It's, you know? it's so different. And they expect, <laughs> and, and I mean, really, they, they've, and, and it's a total cultural thing. And I mean, it's, it's. You know, and I think that's one of the things when you travel, like if you really take in the experience, yeah. like you learn that kind of stuff. Yeah. Like, and there is something to be said about being able to have, you know, a four or five course meal that you take your time and it's not 
you know, a rushed experience and you can really connect with the person that you're with and, yeah. you know, that kind of thing. And it, it um, we kind of take that for granted because if you go to a restaurant here and you sit in a restaurant for an hour, an hour and a half, two hours, like they're going to be like, come on, they're going to be angry at they, you. We, you got to get out of here. Yeah. You better leave a really good tip or we're yeah. missing out on revenue. throw you out and expect a really good yeah. tip. Because, and that's just a difference, you know. And, oh, we had um, comments from, you know, acquaintances when we were traveling. I mean, it, uh, I don't know how old Riley was, when she, but she has been traveling since she was two mm -hmm. with us. You know, we've been to Honduras and police and different places. And so, I mean, it's like we're, you're going everywhere we go, yeah. period. Um, but we had a lot of commentary. Well, isn't she too young, you know, to be going to Vienna? Is she too young to be going to, she's not even going to remember anything. You know, you go to Ireland, you go to England, but she's not going to remember anything. You know, you hear all this and it's like, well, she's going wherever we go. But then when we come back and at school, um, you know, uh, my wife is from Iowa, for example. And one of the teachers said, well, Riley said you went to Iowa or she went to Ireland over the summer. But I'm pretty sure she meant Iowa, you know, back to your grandmother's. And Jana, my wife, is like, no, we went to Ireland. And she's like, oh. Um, but then commentary from the teachers, from Riley's vocabulary and mm -hmm. her experience, um, you know, they're commenting, it's like, oh my gosh, I see a difference, you know, in, in her perspective. Whether she remembers Belize or, or Honduras, yeah. you know, 20 years from now, um, who knows, right? But, you know, God willing, that won't be the last trips that we yeah. take. I mean, you know, you know it, it's, it just changes their, their view, and they know that there's different, there's different ways to live, and there's different, you know, and, and that, and, it, it is powerful. And I mean, that's one of the things that I think it really does for you. And I mean, we, you know, we put up, we, we want them to know where they are in the world. So mm -hmm. in their rooms, they've got the maps and we do the map exercise and we say, this is, you know, where grandma and grandpa live. This is where, you know, different family, this is where we're going mm -hmm. kind of stuff. And like we point it out to them and, you know, they remember that. And I mean, they talk about it all the time and it's, it's just amazing to see, you know, even when we go to a different state, like it's a big deal or, or whatever, sure. but you know, going out of the country is huge. Yeah, I remember traveling within the states and <clears throat> Raleigh is younger, she might not be able to do it now. I don't know, but you know, we name all the capitals of every state. You mm -hmm. know, it's like, yeah. well, we, I think we've covered, look, we've gone about almost two hours. Oh my gosh. I uh, know, that's what happens <laughs> when you're having fun. Um, so is there anything that you want to close with or, um, I mean, we covered it all. I, I think we've covered so. just about everything. I, again, I think this is a, a great concept, something that everybody should really look into. I know it takes it, it takes a different thought and a different mindset, and, and it does, you know, you have to really, um, it's not, you're not going to hear it on the, on the news, you're not going to hear it on the, the radio station, <laughs> you know, and all that kind of stuff. And it's, it's, it kind of flies in the face of, conventional thinking in some ways but you can partner this with you know other other tools and other things out there and but it is a very powerful way to to take you know kind of charge of, of what you do financially and I, I I definitely appreciate you know everything that you've done from you know in helping us from you know learning about the concept your your staff is has been amazing um, I a huge shout out to Carol I, I reach out to her only a couple times a year but every time I do she don't forget Julie and, and Julie and, and, and Jake Emily, and I mean and Megan they're all great and Linda <laughs> <laughs> they're all great I have nothing but love for the for the folks here and it you know Jake helped us with the, setting up the last policies that we did um, Jake's my youngest son the illustration ninja yes yep. so it's been been a great experience and definitely uh, appreciate y'all you know, working with us and, you know, and hopefully. Well, thanks for, <clears throat> thanks for saying that in the kind words. Um, I, my encouragement if for anyone and everyone is to um, see you, discover, you know, do your research, do your homework, do your vetting, but just look at the idea of becoming your own banker. The possibility of implementing the infinite banking concept in your life as nelson nash taught it i know that there's a lot of stuff that's going to come up on my left over there 
Um, some of it is good and some of it is not. But if you go to the source, right, reading Nelson's book, his first book, Becoming Your Own Banker, mm-hmm. his second book, Building Your Warehouse of Wealth, and then I'm partial to the Banking with Life DVD um, because I was a producer and storyboarded the, mm-hmm. the line, the storyline out. But it doesn't promote me. It promotes the idea that you can become your own banker. You know, um, so my encouragement is to just take a look, unbiased look, you know, do spend some money, get some materials from the authors and um, just see if if uh, it makes sense to you. If it does, great. If it doesn't, that's OK, too. You, you know, it never hurts to learn something that you don't know. Um, you know, a lot of the similar concepts, like I mentioned, you know, you, you may not have to do the whole thing, but like even my parents learned something just from my journey right you know and it's you know i think it's a great thing to for somebody to investigate yep me too okay thanks for listening and uh i had fun and i hope you enjoy yes just great time all right thanks mike thanks thank you for joining us on the banking with life podcast if you're watching on youtube make sure to like and subscribe and click on that little notification bell Otherwise, join us on Apple Podcasts and Stitcher for weekly content. 